Hello everyone and welcome to another wire wrap video tutorial. My name is Jim McIntosh and I'm from the Wire Art Education Center. You can check us out online. All the information is in the description below. Now, I really have been exploring some pendants lately and I kind of came across, uh, actually I've been trying to figure out how to take two wires instead of putting them next to each other to attach them by crossing them over one another. Took some experimenting and a lot of research to figure out how to do it and that's what this video is about. I want to show you how you can create a frame around a setting where we've got the, the two wires intersecting one another and how to, to wrap that together. So it's a slightly different wrap. This one's going to be a little more uh, hands-on, I guess. You're going to need a little more patience with it. But trust me, you can do it. Okay, you can do this. It's not difficult. So let's head over to the bench. I'm going to show you what we're going to be making. Talk about the tools and materials and then we'll get right into it. All right, here we go. So this is what we're going to be making. Now, it does look involved, doesn't it? Lots of wraps here. Uh, this is going to challenge you. It really is. But this is a unique and wonderful, wonderful piece. We've got two sections here we're going to be working on. We've got this outer frame that we're going to be working on. Remember I told you we had these two intersecting areas uh, where we're, we've... Uh, these intersecting pieces we're going to wrap. Well, this is the wrap we're going to be focusing in on. And I want you just to think about this. As you're making it, it's, it's, just think of the possibilities that you can use this on, okay? And we'll talk about this uh, at the end, of just the different ways that you can make this. Now, uh, we've got our setting here in the middle, and this is just a typical prong setting. We've been making lots of these in a lot of my other videos. So, uh, great piece, great project. So let's head over and we'll talk about the tools and the materials. Tools for this, tools we've been using throughout all my projects, especially this one. These are wrap maker pliers. You can get a pair of these on my website. The link is down below. Excellent, excellent, excellent tool to be able to make wraps. This makes making wire wraps so much easier. So uh, think about getting a pair of these, but these are, these are the ones I've got. We're going to need something to measure with. We're going to be measuring both in metric as well as in inches. Uh, so I've got this nice little uh, flat uh, ruler I've been using. It's a metal ruler. I've used it for years. Uh, we'll need some painter's tape. I use scissors to get my painter's tape off the uh, roll. We're going to need something to cut the wire with. So we've got our flush cutters. Uh, we'll also be using a rawhide mallet in conjunction with our bench block. Uh, this is going to just we're going to use this just to add some stability. We also might be using uh, one other thing, and that's our uh, chasing hammer. We're going to be using this to add a little bit of shape to uh, uh, the frame on here. Uh, to make the curve in the frame, I'm going to be using my ring mandrel. You can use anything that's round. I'm going to be primarily focusing on the end, the tip, the small area here, uh, to make a nice uh, narrow bend at the top. And since we are doing uh, wire smithing, uh, we're going to need a flat, uh, a flat file. Uh, this has got uh, a serration or cutting edge on all four sides of it. Uh, so uh, get you one of these. This one is fairly reasonably priced. You can get these uh, at any big box store. And I'm also going to be using my rotary tool with a uh, uh, with a silicone rubber polishing uh, wheel in it to make, do some shaping and some cutting on my prongs. You can use a flat needle file if you'd like. All of the tools and all of the materials, it's down below in the description. So go down there, check it out. You can also get some resources as to where you can get these things, okay? One. All right, so first of all, you're going to need a cabochon. I'm using kind of a small cabochon. Let me get my measuring device out here, and we'll measure this right quick. This looks like it's about a, uh, it's a 15 by, um, by 28 millimeter. You don't want anything too huge, not for the measurements of the wire that we're going to be using for this. So to kind of keep it around a 25 by 18 maybe would be a good size stone for this. I'm just using this smaller stone. As for the wire, 
we're using three different types of wire. First of all, all of our frame and setting wires are going to be this 18 gauge square wire. Uh, so a bulk of it's going to be this square wire, but we're also going to be using for our wrap wire, we're going to be using 18 gauge half round. That's going to be the wire we use for our setting. And then we're going to be using some 21 gauge half round that we're going to use uh, to hold some of the, the frame together. And I found that this smaller wire works so, so well for making these, uh, for connecting t the wires together to make up the frame. So 21 gauge half round, 21 or 22, works really good. 20 even will work. Uh, if you get it bigger than 20 gauge, it gets too bulky and it, it just doesn't look right. Uh, you can use it. You can use 18 gauge all the way around. It just, just know that it's going to look bulkier and it's just going to be just slightly bigger. Uh, you may not be happy with the results. I know I wasn't, but you might be. But, so these are the wires. These are the different uh, materials we're going to be using. Again, all of this is down in the description uh, for the project below. To start this project, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a setting first for our stone. This is the cab we're going to be using for this. So what I've done is I have cut four pieces of this 18 gauge square wire and I've cut it to three inches each. That'll give us enough to make a prong setting, but also have a connector to connect the stone to the uh, the frame that we're going to be making around the outside of it. So we start by just straightening each of these wires. And once we get them all straightened up, we're going to line them up next to each other. And we're going to mark the centers. So we've got Four. There we go. Now we're going to line them up and tape them together. So now that we've got them all straightened out, just take them all, square them up next to each other. Make sure the ends are even. This one end is even. You're just going to take a piece of tape, put a piece of tape across all four of them, bring it around, make like a little flag. So we've got it taped to itself and that's going to hold everything together. And then we'll start right there where we tape them. We're going to start here and we're just going to run our fingers up to make sure nothing gets crossed over one another. We're going to take another piece of tape and we're going to put it on the other side and make another flag, tape it to itself. So we've got now a taped bundle here. So the next thing we'll do is we will actually take our ruler and we will find the center. I'm going to take a fine tip permanent marker. I'm going to mark the middle. So these are three inches. This is a three inch uh, wire bundle. We're, the middle of it would be an inch and a half. So we will make a mark there at an inch and a half. Now we're going to make a cut and wrap area for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure to the left and to the right of this center mark a quarter of an inch. That gives us enough to be able to wrap this. So quarter inch to the left and a quarter inch to the right. So this is the area that we're going to use a file. We're going to cut some of this away and then we're going to wrap it with some 18 gauge half round wire. So we're going to place the, our uh, wire bundle here on. I, I'm putting it up on something. This is just a little sanding block that I've been using for forever I think. And I've got my flat needle file and we're going to start by taking this edge this this corner edge and I'm going to where that line is I'm just going to make a couple of passes on that line and that kind of gives us our starting point but also kind of makes a little edge there a, a shoulder for this to be on so we're just going to file across this and we're only going to be taking about I'd say about a half of a millimeter off. We just need enough of an area for our wire to sit in. So just file. We're going to file across this wrap area. Take a few passes. And then when you get to the other side, you also want to do the same thing over here. You want to take one of these edges and you just want to kind of file just across that line to make a nice little sharp edge. So you see, maybe you can see there's kind of a bright area there where I made that. And then I'll just finish my 
finish cutting this area here. And I always turn it around and kind of do a couple of passes the opposite side because sometimes when you the way you file this, you don't get a flat edge. Sometimes you get a high spot on this right side, or this opposite side, should I say? Not the right side, but the opposite side. And I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and flat. Still, just not too... You don't want to take too much off. The reason why you don't want to take too much off of this setting is because it will cause it to weaken. So you have to be just kind of careful as to how much you remove. Okay, so that's all we're going to be taking off of here. So now that we've got uh, this cut area done, we want to go ahead and wrap it. So I've got some 18 gauge half round wire. I'm going to take about a six inch piece of this. And we're going to grab our wrap maker pliers. And we're going to line it up where we want to start our wrap. So we want to start it right about there. It's the edge of the the cut area. I'm going to insert my half round wire. Now this is a very simple tool. These, these pliers are, if you haven't had a chance to see them, notice as I'm holding the bundle it opens up a gap here. This gap allows you to insert the wire. It's just a gap between the jaws of the plier. There's nothing cut into these pliers. It's just the way that these are made. And I'm just going to insert this wrap wire until it bottoms out in there. So it's in there until, it's, until it gets pinned in there. And that just lets me make some wraps. See, it starts these wraps really simply. So we're going to wrap this. We're going to make four wraps. And then we're just going to set it. And when you set it, you're just taking the pliers and, and pushing down on the whole wrap that you just made. And then continue to wrap. And, and something these wrap maker pliers really help you do is they really kind of give you the strength to hold on to this. Uh, the uh, the wire bundle so that it's just a little easier to work with and uh, just a handy little tool to have. I'm going to make a few more here until we get to the other side. Probably got about one or two more wraps so there's one and then we're going to do this. It'll be our last one right there. I use 18 gauge wire on my wraps for these settings um, because we want the strength. It, there's a little more strength here with this heavier gauge wire. Now we're going to trim off the edges. Now these ends I trim off on the cut side. So we are on the cut side of this wrap. If we flip it over, see there's no cut marks on this side, but this side's the cut side. Well, this is going to be up against the stone, kind of hiding our cuts uh, from everything. So we're just going to can I cut them the, about half the width of the wire bundle. So notice I'm kind of going about half the width and just trimming off my excess wire and then I take these wire ends, these wrap ends, and I put them down firmly against there. Now something I do quite often now is uh, when I make these, I want a nice tight wrap. So I get out my bench block and I've got it on a cloth just to dampen some of the sound so it doesn't sound like I'm tearing the house down. And I put the cut sides down against my bench block and then I take a rawhide mallet, take my rawhide mallet and I I just hit the, the, um, the wrap really good a few times just to make sure everything is firm and set into place. Now we can set that aside. And now that it's nice and wrapped up, we can take the flags off because this thing is not going to go anywhere. So remove our little flags. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and we're going to set up the stone. Now, we have four wires here got four wires in this bundle. The outside wires we're going to bend down so that they are horizontal just like so. Okay, we'll do that to this one. We'll do it to the bottom, that same wire. These are going to be used to connect the setting to the uh, outer frame. And we'll do the same thing over here. These are the outside wires. We're going to bring them down until they're horizontal. And I always like to kind of make sure I get a nice squared up 
edge there against the against the wrap. I like it nice and squared up. And we can make adjustments on these as we go. But this is the last one. So we've got two wires straight out just like that. These are going to connect to the frame. These wires are going to connect to the stone. We're going to do that here in just a second, but let's see. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking like here. And these we can adjust to where we want them uh, to connect to the uh, to the frame. We'll do that as soon as we finish up the frame. But the next thing we want to do is we want to take our stone. We want to set our stone flat on our surface in front of us. We need another piece of painter's tape. So let me chop off another hunk of tape. We don't need a very thick piece, just a nice thin piece of painter's tape. And we put our stone down in front of us, and we want to take and set this, the wrap side against the stone, the cut side against the stone, and we're on the back of the stone. And what we're doing is we're just trying to center that on there. And then we're going to take a piece of tape. Actually, it's always best to put the tape on first. So let's put the tape on the, on the wrap. And notice why I, got, I used a thin piece, because I want to be able to see where the wrap is at. So now what we're going to do is we're going to center the wrap on the stone. And then we're going to stick it to the stone. You're going to try to stick it to the stone. This might take a couple of attempts because this is a smaller stone. And I got these big sausage fingers here that never cooperate. There we go. So we got one on there. We got one side on. We're going to get the other side on. And all we're doing is we're just taping this so that it's centered on here as best we can. Around. So just get it centered on there as best you can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these top two and we're going to just bring them out so that they're positioned at the top of the stone. So I've got them on either side of the very tip of that stone there. And we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to bring these out so they are positioned at the tip of the stone. Okay, so then you flip it over. And we're going to take a fine tip permanent marker and we're going to mark just the prong wires where they come out from the stone. We're not doing these outer wires. These ones we started with. We're going to be using just these ones here that are at the top and the bottom of the stone. And we're just marking where they come out from the stone. Be careful not to mark your actual stone. So you should now have four marks all the way around, not all the way around, but on these prong wires. Just like that. So let me show you what you got. I'm taking the stone out of it. There. See, so we've got marks here on each of these prong wires. And I like to make sure that my wires are straight. Okay. It was these two that weren't very straight. So just make sure they're straightened up really good. Okay. So that's these marks are where we're going to be making our bends for the prongs. So I'm going to position my wrap maker pliers just at that mark. See, there's my mark. I'm just going to set it on there, and I'm just going to make a nice sharp bend away from the setting. So here's the cut side. This was going to be up against the stone. I'm going away from that. And I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to just make a nice sharp bend there. So we've got two of them that way, and then we're going to do two more. We're going to do these top two, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to Position the pliers, bend, and we'll do it again. We're going to position our pliers, and then bend. So we should have all four of our prong wires away from there, and we should be able to put our stone in. Now this is where we want to check to see if we need to make any adjustments. Now, the adjustments I'm talking about is, is just if it's too, too loose. Now mine's actually in there pretty good. And it seems pretty even. So I didn't do too bad here. Um, but if yours, let's say these bends here that you made were either too short and this was causing this wire to kind of bend outward a bit because it was not quite fitting. If the setting is too tight, you might have to make some adjustments. But this one's actually not too, too, too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend the 
prong wires up and over the stone in the approximate place where I want them. And I'm doing this in opposites. So if you start here, you go from here to here, here to here. Okay, that keeps, it at least helps keep everything centered on the stone. Now everything's kind of in the way, so we're just going to cut some of these back a little bit. Now I'm not cutting them so short that I can't, don't have anything to work with. I'm just cutting some of the length off. Okay, I'm not, um, I'm not trimming them right now to their final position. I'm just trimming some of this excess away so we can kind of get in here and see what we've got. All right, so it looks like we've got a pretty good setting here. This one right here just needs to come out just a little bit. Okay, when I trim my prong wires, I trim them so that they are just barely above the stone. So the stone will curve. Uh, let's see if I have something I can kind of show you what I mean. I'll use it. So this stone has a shoulder on it right here. So this is the side of it. It's got a nice flat side. And then it comes to this shoulder here. I want this to barely come up onto this shoulder, maybe about halfway to the shoulder before it starts to flatten out here on the top. So this one I'm going to actually trim right in, about in there. Now, it's better to trim too long than too short because you can always trim more. So now we're going to just kind of even those two up and then we're going to do, use this one and trim this one over here. Sometimes it's hard to kind of get where you want to before you cut it. There we go. Right there. And same thing over here. Trim. So this is about the length I want these. See how I'm just barely onto that shoulder right there. Okay, so now that we've got these trimmed how we want them, I just want to inspect them and make sure they're kind of all for about the same length. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to use our rotary tool and we're going to, to cut these with a, with a, um, it's a silicone rubber polishing wheel. And what it does is it cuts and polishes. So it's a nice polisher to cut a nice smooth end on. So I'm going to be shaping these prongs so that they curve on here. So I'm going to take some of this bulk out of each of these prongs so that um, so that it lays smoother, flatter on the stone and looks so much better. So before we can do that, though, we've got to open up two of these prongs. I'm, I'm going to open up these two right here. I'm going to open that one, and I'm just grabbing it with pliers and pulling just enough to be able to get the stone out. Okay, and you can, you don't have to use a rotary tool. It just, I use the rotary tool because it's, it's so much easier to work with to make the shapes that you want. Uh, but you can use a flat needle file and just kind of do this curving motion until you get this curved prong that's on there. Okay, you can use that, but I'm going to use my flex shaft and I've got my polishing tip in here. There's a link below where you can get these polishing tips. And what we're going to do is we're going to just shape these. Let's do that right now. Okay, so we've got this finished. I'm just going to get my rotary tool out of the way. It's kind of, since these are so small, it's kind of hard to show just the curve that's in here. But really all we've done is we've just taken out some of this squareness, the bulk that's out of here, and we've just smoothed this out so that it looks it looks a little fresher and cleaner on the stone. Now, we're not going to set, set the stone in there yet, but you get this gives you an idea 
as to how those, those are going to work. Right now we're done with this prong setting and we can move on to the frame, but I'm, we're going to set this all aside. We don't want to set the stone because it makes it easier to be able to connect the setting to the frame. Okay, and that'll all make sense in just a minute. So let's, let's move on to the frame. So for the frame, the main part of the frame that's going to go up and over the stone is a seven inch wire. And this might be a little bit more than what we need uh, depending on the size of the stone, uh, it, it all depends on that. This should be enough, so I'm straightening this wire out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of that. So half of seven is three and a half. So we're just going to mark the wire here with a fine tip permanent marker. So we're going to do three and a half. That's just that just helps us to know where the center is. That's really all we're doing because we want to take this now that we know the center. Uh, the second wire we're going to use, I'm, I've cut another piece of this 18 gauge at four inches long. This is probably also going to be a little bit more than what we're going to need, but this is going to be the crossbar on the bottom of the stone. And uh, all of this will make sense in just a minute, but I'm going to take my long seven inch wire with the center marked and I'm going to use my uh, ring mandrel. You can use anything that's round. I just want to find, I just want to make a nice curve with it. I'm going to set this, but I want a nice tight curve. So I'm going to center that mark on about a size four. And I'm just going to bring the sides around a little bit. And that should just give me a nice arc on here. And we can refine this. That's all I'm, I'm doing is just getting a basic shape for it. And I'm just going to kind of play with the wire a little bit to kind of get a good arc on here. And we're going to just refine this as we go. Just to make sure. And I'm going to get my stone out also because I want to make sure that I'm giving this enough room. Because if you notice, this is going to have to be wrapped this is going to be, have to be wrapped to this, so we're going to kind of need to bring this out a bit, like so, and then kind of bring the tips back in a little bit. See, so if we have our setting, this will give us enough room there to be able to put all of this together. All right. So let's continue making just some slight adjustments and refinements as we go. I might want this to be just a little tighter at the tip. So I'm going I'm to take my very end of my ring mandrel. I'm going to kind of make that smaller. I want that top part to be just a little bit smaller. I don't want to, I don't want to point. I don't want it to come to a point. I, I do want it to still be kind of rounded, but and that's a good thing. Dead soft wire is great wire to work with because it's very forgiving. You can shape it with your fingers and it won't tear up your fingers at all. Um, and that's why I like using it. And you can always harden it with just by hammering it with a little bit with your rawhide mallet. Okay, so that looks like about what I want, right about here. That it gives me enough room to be able to put all of this together right in there. Okay, very good. So what we're going to do now is I am going to just make something a little nicer here. I'm going to do some flattening. I'm going to use my chasing hammer, and I'm just going to to flatten out this top part just a little bit. I'm not taking all of the bulk out of it, but I do want just a nice flat side here. And you can even texture this if you want. But I'm just, I just wanted to kind of take and make that top part just a little flatter, just so that it looked a little different. I had a little bump there I wanted to take out before we went too much further. Still have just a slight little bump. There we go. And I'm just going to tap some more of this. And what you're doing also is 
by hitting this, tapping it a bit, you are also hardening the metal. And that's something else we want to make sure that we do. But make sure you've got it where you want it before you do some hammering to it because it makes this wire stiffer and that makes it much harder to work with. So there's our front right there. It looks pretty good, I think. And I'm going to set my bench block aside. And now I just want to make sure, once again, that I've got this about where I want it. Yeah. Okay, so the crossbar, this cross piece that we're going to be doing, we want to curve it just slightly. I'm going to just kind of put a nice little curve in it, like so. And it's going to go down there at the bottom. Now, notice I said I, I had way too much wire, and I do. Uh, but I want to make sure you guys have too much wire than not enough wire on this first piece. And as you make this, you'll kind of be able to gauge a few things as far as how much wire that you're going to need for this. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to attach these two together. And I like to take another piece of painter's tape and I like to... I'm going to pick this up. Set that aside right quick. But I've got my painter's tape. I've got my crossbar here. And I'm going to put this on here about where I want it. I just got to remember where I wanted it, actually. So just right about in here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this tape, and I'm going to tape the crossbar that we're adding to the outer part of the frame. Okay, this is about where I want this. And I say about, we can make an adjustment as we're doing this, but let's just double check. It's about where I want it. So we're going to start wrapping on this side. Now, you guys know that when I wrap these larger pieces of wire, I like to use the same size wire. So if I'm using 18 gauge square wire, I like to use 18 gauge half round wire to wrap things with. I have been making this, I did a lot, a lot of test pieces before I started to put this into production and before I taught you guys also. And I found that if I use small wire, this is 22 gauge half round wire. If I use about a four inch piece of this, this works perfect for this. It's nice, it's strong, but it looks really, really nice as it is on here. And I love this stuff. So, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we got a lot of access to this wire right here. So I'm going to start on that wire. So I'm going to hold it with my pliers, my rat maker pliers, and I'm going to take and I'm going to insert the wire in there, making sure I've got it positioned how I want it. And I'm just going to make two wraps around here. So that's one, and here's two, and we're going to end on the back of the piece. Okay, so I've gone and made both of them. And what I want to do is I want to move this wrap till it's right up against right up against where the frame is. So you can see where I've got it. Here's my wrap wire. And I'm right up against the frame right there. Now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to go I'm going to go kind of cross across this uh, and I'm going to go into this so I'm going over the X where they intersect right here and I'm going to do one I'm going to do three wraps here so I'm going to go this way one I'm going to go two and one more I'm going to do a third one there we go so we've got three wraps across Across that center section and what we can do is we can just set that into place so that it stays and we're on the back side still so now what we want to do is we want to go and do the other side of this X so we're going to cross this 
again. So now I went to the outside here where I started my wrap and I'm going to do, oops, there we go, one. That guy's in the way. I might have to, let's trim him off right quick. We're going to trim that off. Trim this off on the back. Okay, so I'm just going to trim it right there. Okay, so now we're coming around the back side and we're going to go the opposite direction on the X three times. So there's one. Here's number two. One more. And here's number three. Okay. So we've got this across both ways on here. And then to finish it off, we're going to, this leg right here, we're going to do a couple of wraps on that leg. So there's one wrap, and that's there. So we've got two wraps, and we're going to trim this on the back of this. We barely had enough wire there. Uh, but what this does, by doing it this way, we are securing these two sides. They're both now dependent upon one another for strength. And they're pulling together. See, so it's nice and tight. So let's double check to make sure. This is where we can make adjustments. We've only done one side. So if we think this is too narrow, when we do this side, which it's you notice it's it's not it's it's slanted, it's off a little bit. So we're gonna have to make sure we we make that even, but um, but we're okay as far as where we've got everything. So we can take this piece of tape off and we can now duplicate what we did right here. So we're going to cut another piece of wrap wire and I'm going to use six inch, six inch piece of wrap wire. I, I just, the, this is fine to use a little extra. Uh, the way we're doing this is we, we've got the room to do it, so I'm going to cut a, a little bit bigger piece of wrap wire here just to make sure you saw how close I got on that in the last one. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to bend this a little bit just to make sure it's even and level. Okay, that's about where we want it. So I'm going to put my wrap makers here. Hold on to that crossbar. I'm going to feed our wrap wire in. We're going to do two wraps, one and two. We're going to move this where we want it. And let's double check and make sure we're even and level. Okay, we are. And we're going to then start to wrap across. So we're going to, whoops, they moved out of the way. Here, let's bring everybody back into place there. There we go. So one. And there's number two. And one more makes three. Okay. We can set this into place. And some of our wires moved a little bit here. And let's trim this on the back, that starting wire. Let's trim that on the back before we get too much into this. And I just want to set that into place here. And we've got these guys. So we've gone one way on the back. So now we want to do the other way. We want to go across the the gap, we'll cross that section, that uh, crossover section. So we're going to do three the opposite way. So here is, oops, there's one. Two. And three. And then we're going to tie it off here on the bottom, but let's uh, Let's set the wrap just a little bit here, there, and then we can now 
do a couple of two wraps here at the bottom on this leg that's sticking out there. So one and two and then trim it off on the back. set everything into place. So this is what we've got. It's kind of... Now, if for some reason these weren't even, let's say we kind of made a mess of them and we needed to fix some of the, these, you could fix this bend, change this bend a little bit to bring everything kind of back into place. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I think it's fine just how it is. So now we can trim off some of this excess wire on these ends. Now, you need to figure out how much of this wire you want. And it's best to measure first. And you can even measure it and mark it. So I'm going to do about 10 millimeters. Let's see, I'm going to do about 10 millimeters from the, from the frame wire here. So I'll mark it at 10. We're going to do it long just to see how it looks first and then we'll figure out if that's what we want. So 10 millimeters here and here. Okay, I'm going to trim that off. There's one. Trim this off. It's two. Okay. I think that might work. Let's, let's see what it looks like with the stone in the center of it. Yeah, that's what we want. Now, for the long pieces, what do we want to do there? Is we want to do, hmm, I want to kind of keep them kind of long. So let's measure these. Um, let's, let's start here with 15 millimeters down from the cross member here. So let's mark it at 15 millimeters there. And we're going to go here 15 millimeters there. All right. And we can trim that one. And we'll trim that one. And that is what we've got. Now, I'm going to take my rotary tool and just clean this up. I'm not going to shape it too much. I just want to clean up the edges just so they feel better. Uh, so if you don't, if you want, you can just file them as well. So I'm going to do this off camera. Okay, so I just kind of rounded those edges off with this, and it's, you know, you can do lots of things with these ends. You could hammer them flat if you'd like, uh, just like we did this top section. Uh, you can just hammer these bottoms flat, these outer, these outer portions. You can do all of that. That's great. Uh, but uh, I just kind of took my tools and kind of rounded everything off. I, I do, did notice that this is not in the right place, and I wanted to make sure that I got these... Uh, end pieces all the way in and the same with the bottom looks like I've got the bottoms okay but you know just get in the habit just get in the habit of uh, of just doing some housekeeping as you're going but that's what we've got nice nice little thing so what we need to do next is we need to now connect our setting to our piece and we'll do that right now. So to connect the frame and the setting, we've got to kind of get everything kind of set up where we want it. And that looks about how I want. Now, it's important that we've got it the right height where we want it, set up where we want it here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, do one side at a time. And I'm going to mark this. I'm going to mark it right here. And I'm going to mark it right here. And what I'm doing is I'm marking the actual setting, not the frame. It's the setting. Because this is where I want to make some bends. Now, I want to measure these 
from the wrap as my guide. And I want to kind of find out where exactly that is. It's about, we're going to go with 10 millimeters. So I want to do the same thing over here. I want to actually measure 10 millimeters. I'm going to start over here at the wrap and I'm going to make a mark here at 10 millimeters. And we'll do the same thing down here. We're going to measure that at about 10 millimeters from there. And that's just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're going to now that we've got these here. See, we're going to bend these with our pliers. We're going to make bend these away from each other. So I'm going to start here on this one. I'm just going to, at the mark, I'm just going to bend it away from the other side. So we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to go away. Whoops. <laughs> Pliers slid right off. All right. And we're just going to kind of square this up as best we can. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of square that up. This one's pretty square. I want to make sure, though. And what this is going to do is this is going to then sit on the inside of our frame and and so that we can wrap the two of these together. So now I want to take and I just want to shape this, give this kind of a curved shape. I want to curve it because we want to kind of attain a curve that's that's the same as the outer frame. Okay. See, so I'm just kind of checking it to kind of bring some of this back. And this bottom one is too long, so I want to trim some of that off there too. Just not a lot of it, just some of it. If you trim too much away, it makes it difficult to work with. But just trim some of that bottom part away, just so that we can now get in here and make some curves so that it we can work with it a little better. So I'm going to take this outside, or this top part rather, I'm going to make it, shape it to the frame. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the bottom, but notice I'm still sticking a little too long here on the bottom, so I'm going to trim just a touch more, not a whole lot. I'm just going to take about two millimeters off. Hey, shot myself with it. And we're going to put it all back together now. And... Straighten out the bottom part too, just ever so slightly. It's a little bit more. It takes just a touch of that curve out. Okay. So there we go. We've got one side. So what we can do now is we can make the bends on the other side. And we're just going to kind of mimic what we just did on this other side. So we've got everything set where we want it. Let's get some tape. I'm going to cut, up a, cut off a couple pieces of painter's tape here. And we're going to just kind of tape some of this up just to give it a little bit of stability so that we can work with it. And I'm going to start here at the I'm going to start, I'm going to wrap the top first in all actuality, in all uh, 
you know, just to make, just it's just easier because I've got a little bit more room at the top. So I'm just going to tape these bottom part, this bottom part together. And I'm going to make sure we're even. Okay. And we're going to take this other piece of tape and we'll tape this bottom part together. Okay, now we're going to start on these top ones. Now to do these top wraps, we are going to use 18 gauge half round wire for this. Uh, I want a good strong wrap. We're only gonna put about four wraps on each side of this. That's about all it's going to really need. So I've got my 18 gauge and I'm gonna cut uh, about a five inch piece-ish. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start above the prong and I want to kind of put a bend in my in my wrap wire because what I want to do is I want to be able to feed this through this in, in through the center part here and then I'm going to put it into the opening in the tool till it bottoms out. This is a little harder to do because I'm doing it off to the side here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to then make my first wrap and I want to make sure I bring these in tight, these wraps. I want to kind of, as I'm going around, I want to pull it. So then we're going to bend it, feed it through the center again. There. And I'm going to do a second wrap. And then I'm going to push it down where I want it. And I'm going to continue making my wraps. So then I'll make a third wrap. And I'm going to make a fourth wrap. And then what I want to do is I want to take this little tail and I want to feed it to the back of this piece. And then I'm going to push it all the way down to where I want it to be. That's where I want it. I'm going to set it right there and I'm going to set this into place. Okay. So I should have a good tight wrap, and then I'm going to go to the back of the piece, and I'm going to trim it. I always trim everything half the width of the bundle that I'm wrapping. Same thing over here. I'm going to get in there and get that little end here, and I'm going to trim it about half the width, and we'll set it into place. So that's our wrap on that side. Let's do the same thing over here. This we get everything positioned where we want it. Just set it into place. There. Trim off our excess wire. And the same thing is true at the bottom. We're just going to do exactly the same thing at the bottom. We're just going to wrap it just like we did. Before we do that though, I want to show you what we're going to do with some of this extra wire here. We've got a little bit of extra wire that we want to make sure that we take care of. And it's all part of this connecting this setting. It's these top two pieces of this arm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it. I'm going to push it to the back of the piece. I'm going to bend it back over the wrap. And what that does is that locks that, locks that wrap into place. And I'm going to trim it about three quarters of the way down the wrap. I'm just going to cut that extra wire off. See, so we've just made this little hook here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. See, so we've removed some of that. And that locks this into place, makes this setting very secure against the wrap. It's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just going to push it over the wrap. Trim it about three quarters of the way down. And then I'm going to use my Dremel again with the uh, with my polisher tip in it. And I'm just going to do kind of similar to what I did to the prongs. I'm just going to take some of this bulk out and smooth it out.
All right, so let me show you what I did on here. So I just just took some of that bulk out. See, I just kind of thinned it out a bit and made it nice and smooth up against there. So that's going to be in a good spot for that. Now, all we have left is to just wrap these bottom two sections and this is done. So why don't we do that right now? So, next thing to do is to polish it. So if you're going to polish it, use whatever polishing method you like. And once you get done polishing, we can go ahead and set the stone. All right, so we've got it nice and polished up here. It looks pretty good. So what we can do now is we can actually put the stone in. And you got to make sure you know which way you want your stone to go in, how you want it to look. And as we were doing all of this, it may have moved a little bit too. The stone, the uh, setting may have moved a little. It doesn't look like it did, but so this is going to. This is kind of tricky uh, because you've got this frame in the way. But what you want to do is you want to get in here, and you just all you want to do is you want to position one at the bottom, one of the sides of the pliers at the bottom and the other side at the tip of the prong. And you just want to kind of push it down onto the stone. Okay, so just take your time, work at it a little bit. The bottom should be a little bit easier. We're working again in opposites. Be very, very careful not to let the pliers slip. Okay, and then we're going to go back up to the top. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're just going to kind of ease the top of that prong down. And then one more here at the bottom. Just kind of there. And there you have it. Just fix the Put your cord here at the top, and you have got a nice little piece. Now, uh, in just a second, we'll talk about this frame in our in the closing for this video. Okay, so that's it. We're all done. Okay, I know that was it. Really involved. It really was. But trust me, your work is going to be totally different than everybody else's around you, because you're going to be making these frames. Now, we only use two wires for the frame you can take and do the same exact thing and make four points. Use four separate wires and wrap, wrap each corner as they intersect one another, just like we did here. We did two intersecting points on this one. You can make four intersecting points. You can make three intersecting points. You make it into a triangle where they cross over one another. You do that wrap that we just did in the project. So there's lots of different ways, lots of different shapes, lots of different things that you can do with this. So explore this. Think about this. You know the bottom wire we used? What if you were to put just a loop in it? Uh, just make a loop and then hang something from that. Something else to think about. There's so many different things you can do with this. So don't, don't just keep yourself to just making it one way. Explore. Find what else you can do with this, okay? It's a, it's a fun project, and it's really going to make you stand out in your work, okay? So, hey, I'm glad you stopped by. I really am happy that you guys stopped by all the time to see us. Uh, please check in again with us next time. And I want you to remember one thing, and then one thing I tell everybody every single time, and it's practice, practice, practice.